Wednesday, February 17th, 2015 meeting of the Monmouth City Council. And Phyllis, you call the roll, please. Councillor Carey. Here. Councillor Guthrie. Here. Councillor Johnson is excused. Councillor Milligan. Here. Councillor Schaefer. I'm here. Councillor Silbernagel. Here. Mayor Overs. David. Uh, all rise for the flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, the first item tonight is the consent calendar, which consists of the minutes from the council meeting and work session of February 3rd, and also the special council meeting of February 7th. If I have a motion to approve. So move. Yeah. In, in uh, I'm sorry, second? Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And with that, we'll adopt those minutes. Um, so, the only thing I have on the mayor's report is the state of the city speech, which was interesting. Um, it has traditionally been an nice little event where the two mayors write a little speech and all of a sudden, uh, without notifying the chamber or myself, uh, Mayor Ricardo came in with a uh, lengthy PowerPoint. So um, it was a little uh, off-putting. I went ahead and delivered my, uh, my address. I kind of went off script a little bit. Um, it, was, it was interesting. Uh, that was kind of it. Uh, I have put a condensed, um, I just sent to Phyllis this evening a condensed version of that speech for Mayor's Notes and the full text is available online. I think I sent all of you all mm -hmm. the full text and um, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, council reports from reps to boards and commissions and Councilor Guthrie to the library board. So the library board had an event, there's a seed lending library now. And it's off to a strong start. I think that took place last Saturday, if memory serves. And so citizens that are interested in learning more about gardening or are interested in procuring some starter seeds should contact the library and also stay tuned. There will be future events as well. There was a potential newspaper archiving project, basically anything that's fallen out of copyright, so early 1900s type stuff. They're looking to preserve that. The cost wasn't. Um, I don't know if it's a lot or a little, depending on, on how you, you look at it. It's a couple thousand dollars, but really a couple thousand dollars isn't what they're able to swing in their current budget, and they can't use the, um, help me out, the name of the uh, Swenson. 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 You can't use the Swenson for it. Thank you. Um, so they're going to talk to the friends of the library and see maybe if they can still make that happen. Okay. And then they're also exploring ways to track the total usage of the library, so as opposed to just the folks that are utilizing or checking out physical materials. Um, but people that are actually using it as gathering space or just passing through and using the public facilities. In a way, the library is operating as Monmouth's civic center. There's a lot of, of public activity there, and they want to be able to present the usage statistics in a way that represent that civic usage. And last but not least, they're looking for roof and concrete quotes. They need uh, demossing and some potential minor repairs on the roof and some repairs on the concrete. It's seeming a little bit difficult to identify and get quotes from licensed and bonded crafts workers in the area. And so this was a question I had. Does the city maintain or does the city have recommendations for a list of, of people that are licensed and bonded in the area that we typically go to for quotes? No. Not really. No. So the, it sounds like the library just needed a couple to, to check with. And so I sent a few people that I worked with and, and some other folks on the committee were going to do the same thing just to get the requisite number of folks for quotes. Maybe that's something we can look into in the future that when somebody does good work for the city, we keep their name and we make sure that we contact them if we need to quote again in the future. That's all I have to report. All right, thank you. Councilor Kerry. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the uh, Tree Advisory Board met on February 10th, and um, <clears throat> I was able to be there for most of that. I had a, I had a, an engagement that, that drew me away, but... Um, uh, the lion's share of the meeting had to do with Brian Dutton's uh, update on Brian Dutton's uh, street tree inventory. Uh, you know, the, the what will s soon, um, and that's it's a relative term, uh, become an online feature right. that, that uh, and, and we'll need to decide, um, you know, how, how broadly that is distributed, who has access to that, if there's any limitation whatsoever. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of data in it, and, and all that data requires scrubbing, and so they're, they're trying to make certain that all that they have is accurate. They're trying to make certain that all of the links work. Um, currently, they have inventoried in the, primarily the downtown area, though they're beginning to work over in the Edwards edition now. Uh, 1,265 trees are in the inventory, and they're all they have their little, you know, little pin. 4,600 round numbers photos uh, of those trees. Uh, there have been all in, all told so far 52 volunteers, and that have accumulated. 670 hours of, of volunteer time. So it's a labor-intensive deal. It's a labor of love. Um, people get really keen and engaged in it. And so, um, but you know, Brian is a is a uh, is a one that one, if you roll something out, he wants it to be done properly and wants it done right. And mm -hmm. so, there there's some tweaks yet to go. So in terms of an actual rollout date, I'm not certain. Um, we will have an Arbor Day celebration in, in April uh, 11th or the 25th, and the exact day, the, the, we'll decide on that um, at a future meeting. Earth Day is, is April 18, and there will be a Eagle Scout project, um, some continued planting out on Hoffman Street um, uh, utility strips mm -hmm. that will be sort of zero scape, low water uh, need. So um, that's, that's an encouraging thing. And then something that we'll see um, at some time in the future, um, uh, our first designated heritage tree. And you might be a bit surprised at when, when you hear what it is, but, but Mark's logic is, is a good one. We, we, he's, we're going to put forward, Tree Board's going to put forward the large big leaf maple tree in the dog park. Now, it's not such a big tree right now, that it would jump out as a heritage tree. However, uh, because they're not on the approved street list, there'll be no more of those going in. There are very few, you know, and, and the ones that are in planter strips at the moment are problematic, right. and they're likely to be removed at some point along the way. And this is one that will be sort of safe, and, and we can grow our own, if you will, grow our own heritage, and, uh, and and sort of jumpstart the whole concept. So I, it made perfect sense to me. That's a good. And, yeah, and um, good, good and, and there are, he'll go to work on uh, bringing that uh, legislatively to us, Very and good. we'll have a chance yeah. to. Uh, so does that mean if anything ever happens to that tree, we have to ask ourselves permission to? Yeah, we'll have to get permission from ourselves to to uh, uh, remove. Just check it. Just check it. We, we can we can uh, we can rescind that heritage designation whenever we choose. So okay. make it easy. Anyway, that concludes my report. Very good, John. And, and I would hope that that tree has a long and happy life and will park providing shade for pups. <laughs> we do too. Very good. <laughs> Councilor Schaefer, Parks and Rec. Council Mayor, thank you. Uh, we had our meeting on uh, Wednesday, February 11th. Um, it was a short meeting. Um, we didn't have a lot to discuss, however, um, that turned into a much more to discuss after that was said, and so we did discuss uh, the park's master plan project, which took a little bit of time, and we just went over and checked the priorities that they had set um, in the last time they set the priorities. Um, if you have not seen this, there are priorities for every park and uh, due dates when they try to meet those priorities. Um, and the list is quite substantial. So we just grazed through that and just picked out a few things that we thought might be um, things we want, want to add, move up in the priority list, and things we might want to take off. A lot of things we've completed um, with the new addition of, uh, new additions to Madrona Park, um, as well as in the um, Main Street Park. So um, we're on our way to completing many of these. Uh, the one thing that did jump off the page to most of us was La Mesa Park. Does anybody know where La Mesa Park is? Yeah, I think I do. It is a landlocked or street locked. It's, it's the one that's inside. It's kind street. of surrounded by houses. With yeah, and, and uh, right. we all kind of look at each other and go, "I think we know where that's at." So we'll pull up Google Maps, and sure enough, it's Hyacinth, and I don't know. It's a block away from my house, and I've walked around it many, many times. Didn't know there was a park in there. Didn't know it was there. Right. So they were supposed to put signage up for that, that park, and um, we're going to look into that. But uh, there's one little entrance in between two houses, which I drove to and looked at. So the Mesa Park, look for it. Um, so we went over that. 
And then the park, uh, General Woods Park mural, everyone sees coming into town, has been on the discussion for quite a few meetings now. They tried to work with the Western Oregon Art Club. Uh, that has fallen through at the moment. Um, so Mark has, uh, Mark Vance has reached out to the folks that did the mural on the side of this building um, mm. to see if they would like to possibly help us out with getting that mural redone. Um, so that'll be updated that, that for who's going to take care of that. Um, and then we also took a look at the 70% complete um, park design for the Main Street Park Amphitheater and uh, just discuss what, what's on there and, um, and everyone seemed to be really happy with what, what they saw and, and really excited to move forward yeah. and get the full complete uh, plans. Yeah, man. So, Looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Scott, do we have 70% illustrations that we could share or hang on the wall or whatever? Anybody would like to see them? I have them. So, so just yes. I don't have. I don't know if they have big ones or not. Maybe we can make some. We're pretty close to five hundred. Okay. Good enough. Just curious. Anything else, Jesse? I know that'll be it. Okay. Thank you. Any community announcements tonight? Central JV team wanted to throw in I walked out with a free throw drop in the end to make a four-point lead with one point eight seconds left. I decided it was safe. <laughs> okay, city manager's report. Here's a couple items. The uh, street planning task force will have our second meeting tomorrow, and that's where we're actually going to really walk in, you know, potential solutions and different ways you can provide that extra funding and get the conversation going on that. And then I sent the council a link today. We actually got published in a, in a, a Northwest Regional you know, Power Planning Association article on our LED lighting, so we're getting some nice, nice bump on that. Mm -hmm. I really like that those lights are, you can set them for different settings for mm -hmm. different applications. So we only have to keep one kind of bulb mm -hmm. and stuff for all. That's, that's just cool. Yep. Three way bulb for a street light. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Okay. Any citizen comments tonight? Seeing none, to the business agenda, which consists of a public hearing on the sale of real property located on Gwynn Street East. Yes. So. Indeed. Let me um, get to that. Okay, so with that, I will open the hearing. And, uh, yeah, that. this is a, a two-stage process to dispose of property. So the first step is you hold a public hearing, take any comments, and then after that's done, you close. We have a separate agenda and actually approves the, the disposition or the release of that property. And so that it's actually the property on Gwynn and Eccles Street it used to be a switching station site. When we put in the substation, that was rendered null and void, didn't need it anymore. So we decommissioned it, took all the equipment off, and then it's been pretty much just down to you know, kind of bare grass. And we have no need for it at the city, any departments. And so at this point, we just went to put it on the market, actually did a realtor, and we ended up with bids ranging from 120000 to 175000 I mean, it actually came in higher than we anticipated when we, we set it up. And we accepted the $175,000 offer. Um, it's got a subject, too, on that, is that they have to get the zoning on it done and a partition, because right now it's public service. Sure. And so it needs to be converted into a residential use, and then they want to go ahead and subdivide it so they can do some uh, duplexes. Okay. And so we put in enough time in there, so for some reason, like, we didn't approve something that they need, then they could back out from the sale. Mm -hmm. But I think what they're proposing is very logical, so mm -hmm. should be okay, hopefully. So you do have your public hearing. And so you're, on this one, is just you hold the public hearing, and we can move on to the next step. So is there anybody who wishes to speak on this topic? Seeing none, <laughs> shall I close the hearing? You may close the public hearing. Unless there are questions from council. I'll close the hearing and we'll see if there are any questions from council. Are there any questions from council? Hearing none, I will turn to item two on the business agenda. Which is a resolution declaring real property located on Gwynn Street is not needed for public use. Yes. So. So likewise, same staff report. This is actually the actual resolution that authorized you to dispose of the property and allow it to be sold. And we did have the 175000 offer from uh, James Warren, subject to that same, they've got some time so they can get through the zoning process and the subdivision, and then at that point um, we would move along. So in this case, you do have the $175,000 that goes to the Power and Light Fund from the proceeds. And then, nice one though, is that once something's built on there, that'll generate property taxes. And that goes to the general fund. So it's actually a win for a couple city funds. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So this would be resolution number 1792, council. Um, 
anybody has any questions or comments on this? And if not, I would just love uh, to have What them. was the, uh, you said there's a, a reasonable use plan for that one? What are they thinking? Oh, they're thinking that duplexes. I yeah. think they're, if they can make it work, it's going to be four duplexes. Mm -hmm. That fits in right with the other housing that's right in that area. Mm -hmm. Good, good match. Good match. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, I'll move approval of Resolution 1792, declaring real property described as tax lots 1701 and 104 of map 08430C, that's capital C, um, <clears throat> as not needed for public use and the sale thereof. Second. Just an amendment there that should be a map, uh, that it should end with the letter B on the map. It should be CB. I think we oh, didn't pick up that oh. last B. Oh. Yeah, it's capital B. Capital B, yep. CB is the way that number ends. Uh, I, I, um, the second will, will uh, accept my uh, amendment, uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll make that friendly amendment to that. Okay. Amended and yes. And second. <laughs> the second is, your second is still good, John. So. Perfect. Uh, any further discussion? Ms. Bowman, would you please wait to read the roll? Councilor Carey? Aye. Aye. Councilor Guthrie? Aye. Councilor Silbernagel? Aye. Councilor Milligan? Aye. Councilor Schaefer? Aye. Aye. Uh, Thanks. Okay, and the last item on the uh, work session tonight, or on the council meeting agenda rather, is the first reading of an ordinance to, to adopt a franchise agreement that is astounding. Yeah, yeah. This one actually a little, little, little different than your normal one. Normally, when you have a franchise agreement, they provide services to basically you know, all of your residents. In, in this case, the primary need for it is to is to run fiber to get to cell towers to do wireless service, wireless phones, and other services. And so, with the groups called the Stown Broadband, and where we've got it set up a little bit differently is it got kind of tricky because if you don't provide any services and have any customers, you don't have any revenue. So it's kind of hard to get 5% of nothing, mm -hmm. but they're still using our property. So what we did is we end up with a base charge, essentially. Mm -hmm. So for the right to go down our rights of way, um, they'll have a $5,000 fee. But then if they did start selling direct services, then the franchise fee would kick in. So if it went past 5000 then we would start collecting more than the 5000 So we built it in for two different ways on that. Um, they also had a discussion, depending on, we had a lot of interesting discussions with MyNet, that they potentially could provide services to MyNet or my net can provide to them. They've had some interesting discussions back uh -huh. and forth. And so if for some reason they can provide a significant savings to my net, then we would go ahead and possibly waive the, the five thousand that would come to us. So just kind of a little 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 a different couple of different twists on this one. <coughs> different. It's a five year term of agreement so we can see how things go. And um, we it's got all the standard stuff you'd think in there about um, you know joint use of poles. They would need a separate agreement with Mom and Power and Light to use the poles. That's a standard contract. And um, but it gets into all the insurance provisions, co-location, everything that you see in a standard franchise. So at this point, we just need to approve the first reading, and we'll bring it back for second and the next meeting. Okay. Are there any questions from council? Yeah, I just one, and I'm sure that this is is covered, but I, I didn't see it as I read the the staff report. At least I didn't look through me. And that is, uh, is there a, a clear firewall between the services that MyNet provides and the services that they provide? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it'd be more if um, probably the most direct way that they would help us out would be like a bulk provider to MyNet, so they would they would transport bandwidth. And then just be a matter of they would just deliver to my net and they distribute it out. So absolutely, and that would come under a separate services agreement too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like right now, we, we buy primarily from LS Networks, mm -hmm. and they potentially could just be an alternate provider. So we could have a doubly redundant connection to the outside. Right? Yeah, there's there's some interesting. It actually was really good. Is actually some of these discussions when they got it, they actually found some interesting redundancy that we weren't aware of. Uh -huh. Actually, it was in our head end. Cool. Mm -hmm. So that was actually good. Yeah, that's a good thing. But then it's interesting how this goes. There's actually a couple pockets where Astound needs to get the, we can actually get there possibly <laughs> easier than them. Uh -huh. So regardless of what happens here, MyNet might be doing some subcontracts with them to actually punch out to a couple of those spots. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of that. Could you repeat that? Yeah, um, we actually might have, MyNet might have an easier path getting to a couple spots that Astound needs to serve. Yeah. So instead of them doing it directly, they might contract with MyNet yeah. to get to those locations. Thank you. Very good. So I have a few questions. Go ahead. Yeah. The um, you mentioned that they won't be providing services to Monmouth residents. 
So the, the cell towers they have don't reach to the Monmouth area? They do. That their, their direct first shot is they need to get to services there, so then they, they have cell providers on those towers. Mm -hmm. But theoretically, yes, they could actually provide wireless services in the Monmouth. Okay. Um, could somebody describe to me Section 2A? There's talk of pending litigation for providing internet access services. How does that impact what we're, what we're talking about today? It's kind of placeholder language. What that is is that right now, as far as the franchise goes, you actually there is no franchise on internet services. Okay. Nor would they be on wireless because you're not using the right of way per se to get to a property. Okay. Um, there's lots of litigation. They've kind of kept the internet. I say whole or away from any kind of fees or franchise fees or anything. So this is basically just to note that you have to take into all that account. You know, so like if, if for some reason we said, yeah, we're going to go ahead and start charging you for that one, the, the feds could invalidate it, and then we wouldn't be able to collect that. Should they start providing wireless internet to our to our citizens? Mm -hmm. They could. Technology would be there. And we, based on the way this is written, would we? Would, would that, uh, would the revenue attained by providing wireless internet to Monmouth citizens be used to determine the 5% franchise fee? At the moment, no, because actually there is no franchise fee on the internet. Nor do we, pro nor do we charge that for charge or mine that. So right what now. do we get the 5% for? That'd be for their phone or um, cable, if they didn't cable. Okay. So who, who else do we have? Agreements like this with right now. Uh, what are they now? What's US West? CenturyLink. Oh, uh, uh, CenturyLink. Uh, CenturyLink. Yeah. CenturyLink. Yeah. yeah. Other We have actually CenturyLink, and then a charter. Okay. So both and CenturyLink and, and Charter my, are using our poles. Mm -hmm. Do they to provide phone mm -hmm. and television? Mm -hmm. And then we have a portion of those mm -hmm. fees, the franchise, the portion of the revenue franchise fees coming back. If I were to look at the city budget, where would I see those revenues showing up in the budget at? General fund. Okay. Yeah, generally speaking, if you a franchise is sort of a 20th century model of finance that uh, uh, cities and, and providers like this are having uh, just a, a difficult time applying to the 21st century sure, information that's... economy, and that's where litigation is, and Congress is always playing on the edges with the prospect of new legislation. Uh, this captures as much revenue through the franchise as we currently can capture. Mm, Got it. Yeah, and, and the reason why I'm asking is it seems like that future is unfolding quickly and the city has a vested interest to itself and yeah. citizens in the internet access realm. Um, so how is the 5% figure Attain. Is that through negotiation or is that okay? Yeah, that's fairly really standard. And that's that's in line with what that's we do. That's standard for franchise fee. Yeah. Okay. Any jobs going to be created locally as a result of this? Okay. Any property that's going to be occupied as a result of this outside the cell towers? No, nope. pretty much get to existing cell towers. So I, I suppose one of the one of the things that's rolling around my head is that Minet's doing fiber distribution right now, but it seems like a lot of companies are coming up and planning on doing what some people would call wireless or something like a cellular internet distribution. And I, I didn't research what Astound offers in other communities, so I don't know if they're offering services like that. But my um, I don't want to call it a concern. My questions have to deal with, is, are, are we inviting in the, the same type of service that Monmouth or somebody else will want to provide down the road? So it's not a concern, it's just a question. I, mean, I, I don't know that it's an invitation so much as a requirement, Marshall, that when somebody wants to come in and occupy things, we can negotiate how much they pay us. Mm -hmm. but we can't tell them no, right? We're, mm -hmm. So we're kind of stuck on that score. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's basically a wide open party as long as you pay the cover charges. Okay. So. And it was confusing at times because yeah, while we're negotiating that it could benefit MyNet, you also could be harming MyNet. Mm -hmm. 
and so it was an interesting discussion to have. Right, and when once again, it's all fairly new territory for me also. I'm rolling around, what if somebody wants to pipe electricity into the area or water into the area? And those two are going to be a whole lot harder because yeah. of exclusive territory stuff that has existed from the 19th century. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then like a, a different example of a franchise, the solid waste service is only one provider. Sure. That's an exclusive. And so, and, I, and I'm, once again, I'm just trying to wrap my head around that the, the President of the United States, Chairman of the FCC, are, are in favor of reclassifying internet as a utility. Does that change the way we look at agreements like this? It may. It would, like, take, it would take federal legislation. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Which is being... Called. Yeah, right. Yeah. It would. Then that, that very well could. Okay. We have some interesting things like... You can't, if you own rental property, tell somebody they can't put a dish on the property. Right. You can only tell them they can't put it on the structure. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to... And that's, that's because of the influence of the telecom industry and federal telecom law. I'm just trying to keep track of the moving right. pieces, yeah. and it no. just so happens that... <laughs> well, I, I understand that. It yeah. just it just so happens that a multi-million dollar moving piece in this community is yeah, mine, and I'm trying to understand how it operates yeah, within the rest of I agree, Marshall, I agree wholeheartedly. The more we know, the better. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments, Council? And so with this, we have a first reading of the uh, ordinance by title. And so I will do that, and we'll come back around to this next time. An ordinance granting a franchise to Astound Broadband LLC, a Washington limited liability company, to conduct a general telecommunications business and granting a right to use public rights of way within the city. And we'll pick that one up next time. Are there any council comments tonight? Hearing none. Uh, we do have a work session tonight, and we also have an urban renewal agency meeting. Uh, the urban renewal agency meeting will primarily consist of an executive session, but I don't have a script, and I really don't need one now since it's a separate yep, meeting. You right? do have a script, and I'm going to give it to you. Oh, work okay. Session. No. okay. I, I do sit, sit for him. Um, I should have known, Phyllis. And uh, we, will, we will then turn our attention to the work session first and then move to urban renewal later. So if I could have a motion to adjourn the council meeting to work session. I'll move. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Let's take a five minute break and meet. Bye.